All right, thanks for staying with us. Corruption has eaten deep into the country and good governance is lacking, but um, is it still possible to rise above all the current challenges that impedes um, good governance, right? Um, can Nigerians look forward to a Nigeria that works? Now, according to the United Nations, um, good governance is measured by eight factors of participation. That's rule of law, transparency, responsiveness, cons um, consensus, oriented, equity and inclusiveness, effectiveness and efficiency and accountability. So how do we begin to create foolproof structure that works? Now, is good governance possible in Nigeria? That's a question today. Please, let's hear what you have to say. Remember, you can join the conversation. Send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 81 803 You can also tweet at us at Wayshow Africa one with the hashtag Wayshow. I want to hear your thoughts in the second because I want to bring in our guest. Is it possible to have good governance in Nigeria? Yes, it is. Really? Yes, it is. Chinelo, how about you? There is hope. Ah! <laughs> I said that there is hope. Hmm. Mm. Let me just reserve my comment. <laughs> I don't have any comment to say. <laughs> Olubankole Wellington, right? That's Olubankole Banki W. Wellington. You know the full name. He's a Nigerian singer, mm -hmm. actor, entrepreneur, philanthropist, and politician. On February 23rd, 2019, he lost the Etiosa federal constituency election to Babajide Obaniko of All Progressive Congress. Ahead of the 2023 general election, Wellington announced that he had decamped from the modern Democratic Party to a People Democratic Party, um, seeking the party's ticket to again vie for the Lagos Etiosa federal constituency seat in Nigeria's House of Representatives. Now, in June 2022, Banki W won the People's Democratic Party ticket to contest as the party bearer for the Etiosa constituency again, ahead of the 2023 elections. And we are really, really honored to have him live with us in studio, looking very dapper, as always. Thank you so much <laughs> for joining us. You are far too kind. Thank oh. you so much. It's an honor to be here. Thank you oh very much. Oh, my God. Where do we even begin from, right? Anywhere you like. You know, okay, so first of all, a lot of, a lot of young people were heartbroken mm. that why would Banky W go and associate himself with a corrupt party? Because yeah. if you look at Nigeria, um, the bigger parties, for instance, the PDP and the APC, mm. um, they have been tagged corrupt mm. by the Nigerian youth. Mm. They don't believe anything good can come up from those parties, mm. right? But I understand because I understand politics and mm. I understand that for you to win, you need to actually be in a very strong platform. So mm -hmm. it is yeah. easy for me to understand. But maybe you should walk the young people that are watching through. Why exactly okay. was that decision made to go from a party that was seemingly good right. to a party that, you know, is tagged perceived as, as corrupt? Perceived as corrupt. Right. Yes. Okay, so thank you for the question. Uh, so in terms of what we did in 2019, um, the Modern Democratic Party was really honestly and truthfully, just an effort of two candidates. There was the chairman of the party, BK, a friend of mine, who was running in Ondo State, and I was running in Etiosa. Outside of the two of us and you know our team of volunteers and friends and family that were standing with us individually, there was no party, there was no structure, there was nothing, no funding, no support. No, the party just, it was just two crazy young guys who said, listen, let's try and do this thing. You work in your state, I'll work in mine, and we'll see what we can do. Now, we ran the kind of campaign that I think most people were proud of, by God's grace. We're very grateful for what we did. However, structure wins elections, okay? It's not vision that wins elections, it's structure. And one of the things that we learned in 2019, coming to this point, is that we must engage with Nigeria where it is, not where we want it to be. Yeah. And that means yeah. looking at the landscape in your state, in your constituency, in your country, and saying, okay, of the structures that can win, and win this election, where do I think that I can stand and find enough like minds and fight for what I want to fight for? Guys, let's be honest with ourselves. Is there any church that you can vouch for 100% of the people that no, attend? Yeah. Is there any mosque? Is there any company? Is there any school? Is there any group of people? Is there any family that you don't have one or two Judas. people in the family that, I mean, sheep. Jesus Christ had Judas, Judas. Yeah. in his clique, in his innermost clique. So I think we have to move past this soapbox mentality of saying this place is all good or this yeah. place is all bad. Oh, A system is only as good as the people, people that are in involved it. in it. Mm -hmm. And the more that we sit out this process, the more that the process will be bad. The more that we infiltrate the process, the more that we put good people yeah. into the process. 
And at the end of the day, we looked at the political landscape and the PDP ch ticked those boxes for us. Mm -hmm. It is a truly democratic party. When I was meeting with the party leaders to say, hey, you know, I, I think I'm coming on board, we're looking at it, they were all very happy that I was coming. But they warned me, they said, this is PDP, nobody can impose you. Mm -hmm. Me, as a party chieftain or a national leader, I like you. Mm -hmm. But if you don't convince those people in your ward, they will not. if you don't get that consensus, there's nothing I can do about it. So you have to go back to the, the words in your course. constituency and go and convince your people in the grassroots. And that's what we wanted. Oppression we wanted a place where, don't impose me on people. Let me go and earn yeah. their support. Let me go and earn the opportunity to lead, the opportunity to serve. Whereas on the other side, I mean, the incumbent that we're running against didn't win his primaries mm. in 2022. He didn't win his primaries in 2019. Mm -hmm. But it, it didn't imposed. matter because, you know, Baba Sope, that's the way they go. And, 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 and you know, and, and, you know different groups have different ways of doing things. Mm -hmm. But the PDP's truly democratic process appealed to us to say, again, it being a democracy, what's a democracy? It's the majority, yeah. right? So if the majority of people that you allow to play in the system are bad, then the result will be bad. Yeah. But the more that good people say, hey, we're going to come in, they we're going to get down into this soil and get our hands dirty, and we're all going to work on this thing, then you stand a chance to turn things around, and the PDP gave us that opportunity. It's a truly, de listen, if you were following my primaries, mm -hmm. you know what happened, the draft right? Yeah. I won. Yeah. Yes, the next happened. morning, we saw a different <laughs> result, mm -hmm. but the party had processes already in place as a party. It wasn't even something that was like just me. Do, yeah. It was just like, okay, after every election primary election there's an appeals committee so you follow the process and you fight and yes it's draining and yes it's expensive and yes you have to work and it takes blood sweat and tears but it is possible mm. we can do this thing and that's the message mm. is we need more we're building a, a bridge into mainstream politics in a place that is welcoming us the pdp is welcoming us they are saying hey we've been running it our way for you know all along where the young people you guys come come and let's Let's drag this thing out. Let's figure this thing out. Absolutely. And that's what the PDP mm. did for us. And that's why we're here. Absolutely. I, I'm, I'm happy that you put mm. that background there because, again, yeah. it, it's, we, we're discussing towards good governance. Yeah. Let me quickly just say that you are a good brand for the PDP. So it would have been stupid of them. <laughs> <Not, laughs> I say so myself. Mm -hmm. For them not to have... Yeah, because, mm -hmm. again... Right. They are also looking forward to rebranding yeah. and trying to yeah. see how they can be seen in a different light. Mm -hmm. There's a brand um, that is tagged in most of those major parties, and that is the big problem. Mm -hmm. I don't see you facing that, you know, because now Nigerians are a bit wiser. Mm -hmm. We're no longer focusing on parties, we're focusing on the individual. Mm -hmm. So it is very possible that you would have gone to any other party as long as your, your, your values and the vision that you have mm -hmm. for it yourself was really good mm -hmm. and people believed in it it will still they will still go with you and that's why i'm sure they, they had to you. give you that yes at the pdp Thank let you. me just state that okay. so now let's discuss good governance right okay. there's a big issue in nigeria mm -hmm. and people think that it is people like you that are elected into office or people that are vying for offices are the problem okay. there is a structural problem a systemic problem people don't understand how deep those things that really eat it's in it. right our our civil service is horrible like mm -hmm. you know if you want to get anything done in nigeria it's going to be really difficult for you to without having to do the greasing of the palm like we see right so if we say we want to fight and we're looking towards good governance in 20 i mean 23 and beyond mm -hmm. where do we begin from from you know to start off mm -hmm. this journey of good governance okay so um there's something that i say which is that even though the problems that we have run from the top down. I believe that the solutions are from the bottom up. Okay. And I say that specifically talking about politics to say we have to be intentional about engaging with and beginning to, to plant people at the table of political power. I have been part of more peaceful protests than most people that I know. And I say it not to brag, I say it's just a fact. For those who followed my career, you know from back in the day we've been doing enough is enough and light mm -hmm. up Nigeria and occupy Nigeria and bring back our girls mm -hmm. and um, NSARS yeah. and all of that. Yeah. So we've, we've been raising awareness about the need for good governance. We've been raising awareness about the need for young people or progressive people or enlightened people to engage with that system.
-hmm. But you see, the goal of activism and advocacy is eventually improvement and impact. Mm -hmm. So until we start seeing that improvement and impact, then our activism has not yet been successful. Sure. Awareness is good, but awareness is not the goal. Mm -hmm. Awareness is a means to, to an get end. to an end. So how then do we make good governance possible? I believe that we must move from protest to power. We must bring like minds into political power and seat them at the table of policy making. Now, when I say the, the solution is from the bottom up, what am I saying? Elected power is more powerful, for lack of a, or more impactful than appointed power, mm -hmm. right? Because if you're appointed, you serve at the pleasure of whoever appointed you, and that yeah. one basically controls your, yeah. controls your time in office. Elected power, you serve at the pleasure of the people. Mm -hmm. It is the people that essentially appoint you and give you that position, and you have that term to make the kind of impact that you cannot make any other way. Not as an activist, not as an advocate, not as a private citizen. All those things are good and necessary. Mm -hmm. But until we start to be intentional about saying, how do we put somebody that we can hold accountable? How do we put somebody that we can, that listens to us? Somebody that will truly represent us? And when you're talking from the bottom up, guys, it would shock you the numbers that it takes to get into elected office. In the National Assembly, in the State Houses of Assembly, I'll use Etiosa as a perfect example. In 2019, there were 337,000 registered voters in Etiosa. 337,000 registered voters. Ask me how many people participated. 50,000. 50,000 is a 16.3% turnout. So less than 20% of the, the registered people. voters in mm -hmm. Now, don't forget, registered voters is not mm -hmm. everybody. Mm -hmm. That's just the people that even bothered to it's register. Cool. Yeah. Less than 20% participated. Would determine who? Ask me how many votes it took for the ruling party to win. To win. Mm -hmm. Ask me now. 1,000. How many? 21,800. Out of the 50,000. Out of 50,000. Out of 337,000. Out of the greater the population. population. So what are we saying here? Yes. This thing is a numbers game. And I maintain that our biggest problem in politics and governance is not one candidate or one political party or one godfather. It's apathy. Mm. It is the idea that my vote doesn't count, or I'm not going to bother, or they're going to do whatever they want mm. to do anyway. It is that mindset that actually makes it possible for, for, this, the, for the rigging and, and all of that, that to, to occur. Because the more people that we have that show up, the more those people are the ones that will decide the outcome of the election. And when those people, that's one thing I like about the PDP is it says power to the people. When the people take their power back, there is no politician that will not have to answer to those people. Right. It is because the people set out the process. Right. So you want good governance. Start with good elections. Start with putting people in place who believe what you believe, who will fight for what you want them to fight for, who will answer to you who will be responsive to you, who will truly represent your interests. And maybe you even say, okay, presidency is hard. Presidency is 15, it's always about 15 million people, give or take. House of Reps is 20,000, 21,800, according to the last election. Senate, you have Senate, House of Reps, State House of Assembly seats that take 70,000, 100,000, 20,000, 10,000, 5,000 people in this country can sway those elections. So we start there. At the end of the day, and, and this is the other thing that I want to, and I think it's very important that young people especially understand this. Most of the time that I'm in rooms with young people, I ask two survey questions. One, how many of us are registered to vote? Because that, for me, that's the bare minimum, right? You have to at least be registered. But the second question I ask is, how many people are card-carrying members of any political, political party? party? Uh, that number is very poor. It's, very, it's, it's almost non-existent. Uh -huh. Now, here's the, here's the catch. Delegates select so that citizens Candidate. can elect. Yeah. Yes. So until we start playing our part in political parties, we're talking about me being in the PDP, more of us need to be in the PDP. Mm -hmm. And I'm telling you, if at least use me as a living testimony that the party is welcoming like minds mm -hmm. to say, come and let's do this thing together. Let's rescue and rebuild Nigeria together. Mm -hmm. At least I'm there. Mm -hmm. And you can see. No matter what, whoever tried during my primaries, we came out the other side. 
So this thing is possible. So let's get in to the party. Let's start playing our role. Let's start working hand in hand with like minds who are there and start saying, who do we want in state house of assembly? Who do we want in the house of reps? Who do we want in the Senate? Yes, we'll play our part mm. in the president and the governorship, but, but those national assembly and state house of assembly seats have as much to do with the quality of life that we live, with the environments yeah. that our businesses are able to succeed or fail in, with the environments that our children are raised in, with the issues that they have as much to do with the laws that govern our society. And we ignore those things at our own peril. That's one of the reasons why I even ran. Because I was like, I would sit with the young, i say, who's your rep? Who's your senator? They don't, know. They don't even know. Mm. Talk less of joining a party to, you know, to be at the table of, so I think, yeah. I love that we're in a place where Nigerians are engaged, we're a little bit we're more aware, where, yeah. where, you know, where there's, there's energy in the air, but channel it. Channel it before it fizzles out. Mm -hmm. And channel it into something concrete in your local constituency. Yes, do what you want to do nationally, you know, but let's build from the bottom. Mm -hmm. Let's get people into the party. And, you know, me, I'm advertising for the place where I'm at because they welcomed me. They gave me a seat at the table. Mm -hmm. The people within the party encouraged me to come, and some people didn't, but some people I did. Tell you are a good brand addition. Mm -hmm. And that's, so, so that's, that's, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> let's, get, let's take a break, right? When we come back from the break, we'll continue the conversation. I believe Manny and Chinelo have questions. Stay with us, we'll be right back. All right, thanks for joining us. Now, if you are just tuning in, we're discussing um, the topic uh, towards 2023, and we're asking, is good governance possible? And we have with us Olubankole Wellington, also known as Banky W. Now, remember, you can join the conversation. Send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 81 803 You can also tweet at us at WayShowAfrica1 with the hashtag WayShow. I mean, you've said so many beautiful things that I'm just smiling. And again, you, I wish I wish young people would understand this thing. Yeah. Go and carry card. But I, at some point, I heard political parties stop, stop also offering card because they, they now saw that they were going, going to come and infiltrate no, that's it. that's not true. That's not true. <laughs> but hey, that's, that's, on, that's, on, that's on a side. I wanted to carry card just for the sake of delegates. That's yeah. all. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you understand? Mm -hmm. But Manny had a question. Okay, well, I had a question, but while he was talking, he, he answered some of my questions. Okay. So what I would just say is we know that um, democracy is for the people, by the people. Mm -hmm. We've talked about, you just talked about ways that these people can come out, you know, instead of just giving up and saying that my vote doesn't mm -hmm. count, mm -hmm. they can come out and join in. But do you think that these people mm -hmm. are ready for good governance. Mm. Because we, we, we may talk the talk, but we can't walk the walk. It, and, and are you talking about the, the general population? Yes, the general popula population, the people. So that's a good question. I think the way that I would answer that is based on the personal experience that I have had in engaging the general population. So when I was running uh, during the primary season in the party, what we did was we attended every ward meeting in our constituency. Etiosa has 10 wards. Yeah. So for in every one of those wards, we would go there, we would engage with the people. Now, not, not like just the delegates or the party leaders. This is just people. Okay. People, indigenous. grassroots, indigenous, non-indigenous, yeah. residents. Mm -hmm. um, and one of the things, something happened, and it actually happened quite a few times. But for me, it was like, okay, maybe, maybe the game has changed now. Mm -hmm. Because we know that... In previous elections, remember we discussed apathy before yeah. now. We said yeah. that they would, you know, there's a mindset that they trust you yeah. to believe to sit out the process. Mm -hmm. And then they would go to the people who are engaged in the grassroots and say, okay, I'm going to buy your votes for yeah. X amount or this rice or this Indomie or whatever the case may be. Hmm. And I'm, I'd be sitting in ward meetings and I'd be hearing from the people. And they would actually stand up and challenge themselves. Like I, we were in, in VI, in a, in a grassroots community in VI, and a lady stood up and said, no matter how much money a politician gives us, how long does it last? Because really, how much can a politician afford to give every voter? Yeah. Really, let's call it, speak. no matter how loaded the person is, for every single voter, it's impossible. 20K, 30K, that's a lot. It, 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 it won't even reach that. It will not even get It won't reach that. And so the woman was like, 
no matter how much they pay us, how things. long does it last? Maybe a week, maybe two weeks, maybe a month, maybe. Papa, if it's too and much. then the next four years are gone. So they started challenging themselves that, you know what? When a politician comes and gives you money during election season, that money probably was stolen from Nigeria. Yes. So it's your money. They're so take it. Us. Take it, <laughs> but they vote your conscience. You yeah. Take it, but vote the right way. We saw that in my primaries. If it was a money, you know, last minute money game, when they did the rerun, we would have lost our primaries because my opponent was ready to spend. I mean, he understands, you know, politics and the way that it's always been played, and he, he was showing that. And my team, we were in the office and they were freaking out that, ah, he's done this, he's done that. We're hearing that he's giving X, X. And I said to them, I said, you know, if the work that we've done it's not and the little money the that people, we've spent, if it's not enough, then, not then that's the story. Do. And we walk out and we say, yeah. you know, it is what it is. But what we were finding was that people were actually calling us the night before the rerun. And they said, Baba, I don't chop the money pieces, well, I will but I go vote for, for you. <laughs> and that's what gives me encouragement that to say that I think now people are, they understand differently. Sorry, because that's what suffering does. More question. Yeah. You, when you talk about the people being ready, yeah. you just made mention of the grassroots people talking because I don't think it's the elites right. talking about how much they are bribing yeah. them. Yeah. The grassroots people are still ready. Yeah. Yes, we know. Yeah. They've always yeah. been the ones yeah. that determine the elections. Yeah. How about the elites? Are they ready? So I would say that from my vantage point, I think that the elites are probably more engaged than I have ever seen them. And I think if you looked around and just caught the, uh, the energy that's in the atmosphere, I mean, if you looked what happened during the NSAS peaceful protests, if you saw, I don't think the elites have ever been this engaged. Now, you do raise up a good point, right? Because it is incredibly easier to participate in a march than it is to participate in an election. Thank because you. in March, you see the post on Twitter, you see it on Instagram, you just you wear your t-shirt and you and go. Your friends are going but for to, you to participate cool. in an election, you had to have registered. You had to have done your biometrics. You had to have gone to pick up your PVC, and then you show up on Thank election you. day. Those are four very distinct yes. processes that you must be committed to. Thank you. So elections are a marathon. They're not a sprint. Yeah. Oh. We like sprints. Which race do we like? It's the 100-yard dash. <laughs> Which food do we like? It's the one you can put in the microwave and, snap, snap. and done. Oh Snapchat, in and out. <laughs> so whether we will see a better turnout in 2023, I'm, I believe that we will. Mm -hmm. How good it will be Damn. remains to be seen. However, let us also acknowledge that the votes in the grassroots outnumber the elites Thank easily you. 10 to 1, yeah. easily. They, they are way more, they are, there are way more votes in the grassroots than there are in the elites of Nigeria. But it's also in the grassroots where most of That's the pain is. Dangerous. That's where people are not living on $2 a day. That's yeah. where the pain is. That's where the poverty is. That's where the hunger is. That's where a lot of the problems that we have as a nation yeah, reside. So for me, what that means is that if the elites would just rise up to the place, join, join the process, you mm. would be surprised what at how influential yes. you would be. Because you only have one vote. But by the time you come and you attend a ward meeting and you are helping rent chairs and tables Thank and you. helping organize and you're just involved, and somebody, you would be surprised. There's so much need. I, every day, I can't tell you the amount of problems we're just trying to put out fires and help people deal mm. with sick children and school fees and house rent and you know just there's, there's so many issues mm. and there are not enough of us that say hey let me come and they have help out plenty, but the laborers, but the laborers are, are, are few yeah. god bless you and and for me that's the key is that elite nigeria needs to come to a bargain or an agreement of sorts that listen the country needs to be on the path towards growth and development. Mm -hmm. That is something we have to agree as, as the elites in Nigeria. Yes. The people at this table are not the average Nigerian. Mm -mm. You know, sometimes they, they, they get offended when you call them elites, but it's the truth. It's the truth. When we are the, we are the 1% or the 5%, mm -hmm. the majority of Nigeria is not at this table. Yeah. But this table is incredibly, has the potential to be incredibly influential in yeah. saying, how do we partner? If, if it's not taking too much of, uh, of time, I'll give you a perfect example. During the COVID lockdown, 
all businesses were shut down. Yeah. You know, you'd be driving to the supermarket, you would see that the number of people on the street that were just begging, because poverty went up overnight. There yeah. were people whose daily income was tied to that yeah. daily. So Work, there, was, yeah. there was poverty that shot up overnight. There were so many people that fell beneath the poverty line because they just couldn't afford to eat. And I'd be in my resident association group in Lekki Phase 1, and they would, you start hearing, oh, somebody was driving to the supermarket, they broke her window, that, yeah. like, the, 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 yeah. because people are hungry. Is that contributing yes. money? Yes. Thank you. <laughs> so what happened? Some, some elites would say, because I was seeing these messages, oh, only go to the store from this time to this time. And for me, it was an alarm bell. It was like, no, the, the solution is not for us to go and hide. Yeah. The Let's solution is come to in and help. How do we, like, how do we, exactly. so, how do we help? help? How do we collaborate? Yeah. So I called Taiwo, who's a member of my uh, um, so campaign special. team and, and part of my foundation. We found three other friends, Miss um, Doi, Noella, and Maureen. The five of us put together Lekki Food Bank. Oh. We started looking for people to, it started as a, what, CAC was not even open, so we couldn't even register it, but we just started the work. We formed the WhatsApp group, we reached out to people in Lekki or Nero. As of today, Lekki Food Bank has provided food for over 100,000 people. Oh, wow. Whoa! And I'm not saying that to well brag. Well done. I'm yes. saying that to say that it there is, is need. Yeah. It's possible, God bless mm -hmm. you. That's my slogan. It is mm -hmm. possible. Mm -hmm. It is. Now, I tell you a crazy story. Months after the lockdown had been lifted and people had gone back to work, I saw a tweet on Twitter one day. And a guy said he overheard a cleaner in the ShopRite Mall, in the Palms Mall, talking to his colleagues. And the guy said, if not for our Bank EW and Lekki Food Bank, you. he doesn't know how his family would have survived Aww. the lockdown. Those are the kinds of words that that's, stick with that's you. That's why you do it. That's why you try that's why to you serve. Do it. That's why you offer yourself up. Because you know that God has used you in some way to be a blessing a and to sustain people blessings. and to be a channel of blessings. Yeah. And that's what this is about. That's what getting mm. into office is about. Yeah. Government is called public service for a You're reason. A servant. We've exactly. turned it into this red carpet. There's no Emilio inside this King, matter. There's no entitlement ah, in this. Nothing. this. This is supposed to be about These people, are jokers. people that have a heart for ah, service. Like what's people going that have a on? heart for service. People that yeah. you you see somebody's antecedents, you know that this is who this person has always been. Mm. And for me, that's the driving yeah ambition that's the goal that's the that's what i'm looking for at this stage of my life is impact its service it's saying how can god use me as a vessel to back it up for presley night god bless you my sister <laughs> out of breath for now please no no out no no back it for <laughs> from the bottom from the bottom <laughs> oh my god yeah. okay you want, i thought you had a question yes, quickly yes, go yes, ahead mm -hmm. okay so i mean it's really beautiful to hear this <laughs> thing quite uplifting as well but sis. then um I'd like to know, to you, what are the parameters of good governance? The parameters of good governance. Yeah. I think if you're talking good governance, you need to talk mm -hmm. about accountability. Mm -hmm. You need to talk about transparency. You need to talk about responsiveness. You need to yeah. talk about communication. You need to talk about competency. You need to talk about um, engagement. And you mm -hmm. need to talk about empathy. Mm -hmm. For me, those are some of the things yeah. that you, measure you have to tick. tick. You must tick those. You, mm -hmm. You must be the kind of person that is accountable to the people that put you there. Mm -hmm. You must also, communication is such an important part of yeah. governance because yeah, people need to understand. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You have to be a good communicator. Mm -hmm. You have to keep people informed. You have to have regular uh, forums, town halls, where your constituency can come, ask you questions, see your report card. You what are you those, are those part of my rep yeah. Yeah. What are so those part of your yes. plans? Because I want to quickly narrow it, because as we are having a great conversation, time yes. is running, yes. right? Yes. I want to narrow down why you think you are the best person for the job, because okay. for the, especially Etiosa. I told you, when I jokingly said it when you were sitting down, I said Etiosa is one of the most, if anybody can solve the problem that Etiosa alone has, right. God be blessed that person. Because Amen. He, I receive it in Jesus' name. <laughs> you know, because there, there's so much um, movement here. Yeah. Etiosa is like the way people are jackpotting abroad. People mm. are jackpotting to Etiosa. Absolutely. It's, it's one right. of the most you know heavy local heavily government. populated yeah, heavily populated heavily industrialized heavily everything right there's yeah. a lot going on in mm -hmm. etiosa mm -hmm. and i believe that if we had smart people mm -hmm. in that seat you know that would bring up 
laws bring up things that that would help do some level of and ease some level of challenges that we're going through in Absolutely. Nigeria. This will be one of the best place um, um, local governments to, to actually live in, right? Yeah. So, in the bit to to talk about, you know, some of the plans that you have okay. for Etiosa, what would you say um, are the top priorities for you? Maybe you say your top five list of what you think okay. should be in Etiosa right now that is absent. All right. So I will start by saying that our legislative agenda is a living and breathing document. So we're still tweaking it. Okay. But it is available for anybody who wants to um, check it out. Please go to banky2023.com. Okay. If you click on the manifesto there, you'll see the legislative agenda. You'll see what some of our plans are, what the mindset is. Now, in, in digging into it a little bit, and I know that we're short on time, I would say this. First of all, the overarching mindset that I have and that we have in getting into office is that the way that we get out of the mess that we're in as a nation is through innovation and reform. Innovation mm -hmm. does not happen in government offices. Innovation happens in ways. It happens in the private sector, in fintech, in entertainment, mm -hmm. in media, mm -hmm. in agri, in private businesses. Out of the seven unicorns in Africa, Nigeria has five. Yes, sir. So that, for me, shows you that we are chasing innovation so pretty much. well. Yeah. The problem is we've been ignoring the chance to put people at the table of reform. Yes. Reform only happens when you put reformers at the table of policy making. People who can look at the laws and look at the, the environment and look at the policies that guide the environment and say, is this the smartest way that we can do this thing or mm. can we rethink it? So now let's get into what I mean by reform. Take education, for instance. Mm. I think that there is some reform that needs to happen in our educational mm -hmm. system. Um, number one, tech. Just That's for me, tech introduced. is an equalizer. It's something that levels the playing field. Mm -hmm. At the moment, we are, and I'm sorry to say it, and I'm not a prophet of doom, and we're, part of the reason that we're going in is to make sure that this does not come true. Mm -hmm. But at the moment, we are raising potentially armed robbers and terrorists and gang members and cultists when you go into our secondary schools and see what kind of education we're giving our young people mm. in our public school system we're setting ourselves up for failure we're setting them up for disaster and these are the future the future leaders it's supposed to be the future so for me it's like okay what does that mean number one can i put together a public private partnership that introduces a free tech Amazing. education for people in Etiosa. And how many words can we put it in? Hmm. This is the seat of our economy. This is where the telecom industry Everything is, is the tech yeah, industry. Exactly. Every major So why company, do you think it's not happening right now? Because I think that you've, unfortunately for too long, we've allowed rent seekers mm. to be in government and not reformers. I like and we word. need reformers, not rent, rent seekers. seekers. We need people who are going in there saying, we mm. got to do this a different way and quickly where the, co the country is in a, in a bad situation, but it's not, it's not over. It's not over. It's not over, and it can yeah. be turned And because around. it's a good idea, you don't need to bribe me to give you the contract <laughs> no, to do it. No, you don't. And, and again, Etiosa is it's the headquarters of our economy. So the private sector is here. But mm -hmm. now, aside from saying, how do I do this as a collaboration in Etiosa, my reformer mindset is, how do I institutionalize this that makes it easy for it to happen anywhere in the country? Mm. And the way you do it is this. There is a law that is in place now that says, hey, Waze TV or whatever company, whatever bank, whatever oil and gas, if you pay for this road that mm -hmm. the federal government is supposed to yeah. fix, you get a tax that, break, yeah. right? You, you get an incentive as mm -hmm. a company yeah. to help because the government can't pay for all the mm -hmm. infrastructure needs. Yeah. So incentivize government mm. to invest in the minds of our young people. Mm. So why don't we put in a law that says, hey, Waze TV or whatever private company, if you pay for these tech hubs to be built where young people can come and get a free, free education tech. in yeah. tech, yeah. then you get tax a, a tax break because yeah. investing in the minds of our young people is as important as building a road. Absolutely. It's as important as fixing a bridge. Yeah. It's as important as any other infrastructure mm. investment, which is I important. It's important, important, important. Okay. But it's, yeah. it is so critical mm. that we look at India. It's a tech supplier yes, for the world. for the world. Because they focus on it. It's a hub, a tech hub. It's, it, countries, and this is what I was saying earlier about the elites having a bargain. There's, there's, a, there's a bargain that we need to have between government, between the private sector that says, Nigeria must immediately get on the path to growth and development. Absolutely. How do we do it? Mm. Tech is one of the ways. So mm. we incentivize companies nationwide. 
But at least I know, even while we're trying to get that to pass as a law, we can do it here. Absolutely. And I can walk into every oh, company wow. here and say, guys, Let's start. this is something that we can yeah. start. Let's give start give me one take up. Let me show you yeah. what you can do. Yeah. And then we move. Yeah. So, Absolutely. We so it's, it's taking that... Uh, sorry. I Go know. ahead. It's, it's taking that reformer mindset yeah. into education. It's taking yeah. it into Everyone healthcare, healthcare all security. The and saying, sector. How do we yeah. rethink the way... Banky, I think we need to bring you back. I need to hear you more. But let's quickly take comments because we've run out of time. Like, literally. Let's quickly take comments. Good evening, my dear beautiful sisters of what are you saying? Yes, it is possible, but on, on one condition, it is in our hands. Your guest made mention that when we are bribed, we should take it, but vote for the right person, mm -hmm. and I support him. Manny Money said that democracy is the government of the people, by the people, and for the people. I agree with the way things are going. People have not learned their lesson, and they are still in a hurry to vote for the wrong people, simply because they want to vote for their people. They don't care if the person... Uh, can deliver. We have to rise up. We cannot give a holy thing to a dog or cast a pearl before, before swine. swine. So yes. let us remove sentiment and vote wisely. I mm -hmm. must confess, you ladies are looking beautiful and lovely. <laughs> Thank you, Daniel. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Go ahead, Manny, quickly. Okay. Good evening, ladies and Banky W. Is it possible for electorate to have impeachment power over president? if his performance is far below expectations. In the UK, ruling party executives can impeach or pass a vote of no confidence on PM by calling for an election within the party. Mm. We have too many party party government in Nigeria. Regards, Ade. Thank okay. you, Ade. Mm. Do, you, do you want us to respond to that? Well, let's quickly take the take final comment. Okay. So, so, quickly um, respond. So it's good to see you, Banky W, on Waze tonight. Good governance is for sure a possibility in our country towards 2023. We must put our acts together and checkmate those in power now. Let's not make another mistake again. Mm. Let's lay a, fun, a foundation for our children, please. Great topic always at ways. Thank you, Kenneth. So, much. Okay, so you can quickly, you take, quickly say, I quickly say that um, yeah. it is possible to impeach a president, but it comes from the National Assembly, mm -hmm. which is why we need to put the right important people in place. that you put. So a good National Assembly, by design, mm. should be able to handcuff a bad president or mm. impeach a bad president. Mm -hmm. mm. But you have to put people in there. Mm. who know what they're going in there to yeah. do. You are there with an oversight responsibility on the executive. Yes. It's your job... Make sure as, to check, make them. Yes, to say, are they doing the right thing? Mm. What are they doing here? No, Mr. President, you can't do that. Or in the state case of the State House of Assembly, no, Mr. Governor, you can't do that, or you can't do this, yeah. or we support you for this or that. But you need to, to have people that are going in there with that mindset of their own with that mindset that has the best interest of the nation at, at heart. heart and i hope with these few points of mind ah, <laughs> you have been able to convince us that good government is possible in nigeria to every, every young person out there you see the reason we are bringing different people because somebody is accusing us i hope we bring other people mm. and all of that we are bringing different people across our party ways does not belong to any party mm. What we want to do is listen to the minds of the people that are vying for offices. Mm. It is important that you hear them. Mm. And if you feel like this is someone that can drive us, that can lead us to a promised land, by all means, vote beyond party, party structures. Let's start to educate ourselves for what is important and what we need. As opposed to just waking up and saying, no, it is no. the way we used to vote blindly. When we start for one party, we just go like that all the way. No more. No more. Please let me just end by saying I'm on in PDP. <laughs> <laughs> you will pay us for that. For us for us. So please remember this. God bless you. Thank, thank you so, so much. Uh, thank you. I had a great time. Thank, thank you. So thank you so much. We had a fantastic wow. conversation. I love great conversations because mm -hmm. for me, open your eyes and see. Mm. We'll see you guys. Eh? Wait. Thank you, Banky. Ah. Thank you, Chinelo. Thank you, Manny. <laughs> now, before we go, ensure you follow us on Instagram, TikTok, everywhere. It's at Wayshow Africa. You can drop a comment. Most importantly, follow all our engagements on social media. Like, share, invite your families and friends mm. to watch. We, we drive great conversations here. It's important that you... Tell people to listen, right? So if you missed today's quote, here it is again. Good governance with good intentions is the hallmark of our government. Implementation with integrity is our core passion. These are the kind of leaders that we're looking for in Nigeria, yeah. right? We'll see you guys tomorrow at 8 p.m. as we bring another great conversation to your screen. Enjoy. <laughs>